Sonic Advance, released in 2001 for the Game Boy Advance, developed by Dimps and published by THQ. It was generally praised by critics, being lauded for its faithfulness to the Genesis games, while certain subsectors of the fanbase criticized it for tainting the formula with Green Eyes Sonic. And you guys know me, I'm a classic Sonic fanboy who hates anything released after 1994, so I think I'm the perfect candidate to discuss this game in depth. And after beating it with all four playable characters, I definitely have a lot to say. So let's Let's not waste any more time. Without further ado, this is my retrospective on Sonic Advance. The game kicks off with a pretty slick intro sequence, showing Eggman stealing a Chaos Emerald and introducing us to the four playable characters. It doesn't tell us much about the actual story though, so I guess we gotta do this the old fashioned way. According to the manual, Dr. Eggman is out to gather the Chow Emeralds, okay, and he's capturing animals to power his evil robots. In other words, it's the same plot as Sonic 1. This is fine and all, but considering that 2, CD, 3, and Knuckles all had their own twists on the concept, I can't help but wish Advanced did something a little more creative, especially after the adventure games raise the bar for Sonic storytelling. There aren't even any cutscenes in this game, save for the intro and outro, so it really feels like a step back from the previous 2D entries. I suppose Dimps wanted to keep things simple to harken back to the golden days, but even a tiny shred of originality would have been appreciated here. With the story, or lack thereof, out of the way, let's talk presentation. Sonic Advance is one of my favorite visual styles in the entire series. The player sprites are well animated and beautifully translate Yuji Uakawa's art style to pixel art form, and considering he was the art director for this game, that shouldn't come as a surprise. The environments are also nice, going for a more detailed look akin to the adventure games, while not straying too far from the vibrant and colorful landscapes of the Genesis titles. Like the story though, I do wish these environments were a little more unique. We go from Green Hill Zone number 47, to Legally Distinct Metropolis Zone, to Casino Night and Carnival Night's Baby, to Ice Cap with Water, to Angel Island Sky Sanctuary, and finally end on Egg Rocket, probably the most original zone of the bunch. Again, I get it, this game is clearly trying to keep things simple to appeal to older fans, but considering that Dimp's previous game was Pocket Adventure, which was entirely made up of recycled zones from Sonic 2, I feel like Advance was their opportunity to get a little more creative. Oh well, maybe next time. That's really my only major complaint with Advance's visuals though. You can tell that a lot of love and care was put into this game's presentation. There's so many stupid details I love, like Knuckles' face plan after landing from a glide, Amy screaming at you if you leave her idol too long, and... I mean, come on, that's just too good. Before we move on to gameplay, I should also briefly touch on the music. By Game Boy Advance standards, it's pretty great. It goes for a varied style to suit each of the game's environments, in a similar fashion to Sonic CD and the Saturn version of 3D Blast. The low fidelity of the instrument samples does get a bit grating after a while, but like many other games on the system, Sonic Advance also employs the audio processing unit designed for original GB backwards compatibility to incorporate chiptune sounds, which help these tracks age a little more gracefully than they otherwise would. Now it's time for everybody's favorite subject. Gameplay. Sonic Advance largely takes after the Genesis games in terms of design, with side-scrolling platforming that takes advantage of Sonic's trademark 360-degree pinball physics. Like Sonic 3 and Knuckles before it, there are multiple playable characters, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, all returning from 3K, as well as Amy Rose, making her playable debut in a mainline 2D game. While Advance does adapt some elements from the adventure games, all four characters will experience the exact same set of levels this time. No unique campaigns, no intersecting storylines, just the tried and true 2D Sonic formula with the freedom to experience it with the character of your choice, and for a 2D game, that's perfectly fine if you ask me. As is to be expected, each character has their own unique attributes. Sonic retains all of his moves from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, including an improved Insta Shield, but he also has a couple of new abilities. One of these is the Somersault from the Adventure Games, which, yeah, I really don't know why this is here, but hey, we also have Rail Grinding, which... Yeah, I really don't know why this is here. Tails can fly in this game, but this time around he also has the Tail Whip, again from Sonic Adventure. It's kind of useful, I guess, but only for stationary things like item boxes. Other than that, it's the same easy mode playstyle that Tails is known for in these games, and the de facto choice for finding special stages. Knuckles is interesting. I went on a semi-rant in the Sonic 3 video about how his playstyle never really did anything for me in the Genesis games, but this time it was strange 
strangely different. Either Dim smoothed out the rough edges in this game, or I'm just starting to come around on Knuckles, because I actually enjoyed controlling him quite a bit here. Gliding and climbing feel better than ever before, though the levels unfortunately don't take advantage of that very often. Like Sonic and Tails, Knuckles also has some superfluous additions to his moveset, including the punch from Adventure and the ability to float on top of water, which... Okay, this one's actually pretty useful. Finally, we have Amy, and man does she suck at first. She can't spin dash or even roll into a ball, she can hammer attack but can't do front flips with it, and she's just generally slower than the other three. However, the more I played as her, the more I started to appreciate this playstyle. In stark contrast to Sonic Heroes, Amy is the hard mode of this game, and presents her own challenge that feels entirely unique to the rest of the cast. My only big gripe is that some levels, particularly Egg Rocket, don't feel like they probably properly accommodate her gameplay, which can lead to some awkward moments. Still, true to the general spirit of Sonic, Amy becomes more fun the more you play as her in this game, and to me, her playstyle stands as one of the most uniquely challenging in this entire series, even if it's not my most preferred. Let's talk about Sonic Advance's level design. When thinking of other Sonic games to compare the acts in Advance to, my mind tends to lean towards Sonic 1 on Genesis. The levels here feel like a more advanced ah! version of Green Hill, Spring Yard, and Starlight's philosophy, focusing primarily on platforming but still utilizing Sonic's trademark speed and physics. Something Sonic 1 didn't do, however, was encourage exploration, and this is an area where Sonic Advance excels, particularly in how it encourages the use of the spin dash. There are so many moments in these levels levels where you'll spot a high up ledge and be like, oh, I could definitely get up there, and then you do, and it's so satisfying figuring that out. The game is chock full of moments like this, provided you're willing to skid to a stop from time to time. But while I've been largely positive about Sonic Advance so far, there is one glaring issue with this game that unfortunately brings down the experience a fair bit. This game is evil. There are so many beginner's traps in these levels, whether it's Ice Mountain and Angel Island punishing you for spin dashing at the beginning like everyone always does, or spikes coming out of nowhere. And no, I don't just mean not being able to react to them in time. I mean they literally come out of the ground under you after high speed sections, which you have no way of anticipating unless you have the level memorized. And that's not even mentioning Egg Rocket. Yeah, it gets easier after repeat playthroughs, but that doesn't excuse the first 10 times through being absolutely missed. Miserable. There are so many points in this level that will make you think you're going the right way only to loop you back to the very beginning, all while you're on a time limit. Act 2 isn't as easy to get lost in, but it does bring back those good old spikes we love so much, only now you have to anticipate them while upside down. Fun! So yeah, Sonic Advance has me pretty split on the level design. On one hand, the exploration and utilization of different characters is excellent for the most part, but on the other hand, there are so many BS moments that will likely scare off newcomers. If if it's worth anything though, I did get through all of them with all four characters, and they do get easier the more you play them. With that said though, that's really not an excuse for these beginner's traps to exist in the first place. Next, let's talk about the bosses. As I've repeated countless times throughout my videos, classic Sonic bosses make use of a simple design philosophy. There's no limit to how many times you can hit the boss while it's vulnerable, only the amount of time that it is. The reason this works so well is that the player's skill is what dictates the pace of the fight, rather than scripted attack cycles. Sonic Advance's bosses thankfully follow this approach for the most part, though they're not all created equal. The Ice Mountain boss is one of the lowest points in this entire game, particularly when you're playing as Sonic. You're underwater, there are no air bubbles, there's spikes falling from the ceiling, and you have to precisely land on them with floaty water controls just to get oxygen, let alone hit the boss. It's doable, yeah, but only after a frustrating amount of trial and error. The bosses up to this point have been piss easy too, so this difficulty spike really comes out of nowhere. In fairness, this boss is significantly easier as literally any other character other than Sonic. In fact, that can be said about the game at large. Weird how the title character got the short end of the stick this time around. I'm also not terribly fond of Egg Rocket's boss, though it's definitely not as patience testing as Ice Mountain's. This one has a fine enough concept, making you jump on this bridge trampoline thing to flip Eggman's mech over and attack. The problem here is the tedium. There's no real way to make this boss go any faster, what with the crappy GBA trampoline physics and the constant barrage of projectiles. Like Ice Mountain's boss, it's doable and you can get consistent 
consistent at it, but even when you get over the difficulty curve, it doesn't become fun after that. And that's a problem when you're a boss in a Sonic the Hedgehog game. As for the other bosses, I really don't have much to say about them. They're fine enough and quick to deal with when you know what you're doing, but none of them did anything particularly creative that impressed me. In the boss department as a whole, Sonic Advance is forgettable at best and frustrating at worst. Sonic Advance has some pretty notorious special stages. In preparation for this video, I ran a poll in my community tab asking if I should even bother with them, and it was met with a resounding... So, we might as well give them a try. But whoops! Before we even reach the first one, we already have a problem. Sonic Advance's special stages are hidden in the same BS way as Sonic Heroes. They're only hidden in specific acts, and you only get one chance at it before you have to start the level over and find it again. What's even worse about Advance is that you have no way of knowing which acts the springs are in besides just feeling each level out. If you're really dead set on finding these things, I recommend playing as Tails, because most of them tend to be hidden in high places that the other characters can easily reach. But what about the special stages themselves? Well, they're terrible. If you thought Sonic 2's fake 3D was bad, get a load of this. The perspective is nonsensical and nauseating, and you're expected to collect rings when you can't even tell what plane of existence they're on. Look at this! I'm flying over them! How am I not collecting them? The first special stage alone took me 21 tries over 20 minutes. Well, gee, Spawn Man, that doesn't sound that bad. I mean, that's less than a minute per attempt. I was using save states. Remember, you can only attempt the special stage once before restarting the level over. The game plops you back next to the special spring just to give you false hope, but jumping back on it just makes it act like a normal spring. So imagine how long it would take if you had to reset, select the stage, and find the special spring all over again 20 times over just to beat the first one. No, even better. Imagine how long it would take to do that for all seven of them. Actually, no, let's not imagine. Let's use the power of math to calculate it. For the first level, it takes me about 2 minutes from resetting the console to get back to the spring. So, multiply that by 21 attempts to get 42 minutes. Add the 20 minutes of actually playing the special stage to get an hour and 2 minutes, and multiply that by 7 to arrive at a grand total of... Drumroll please... 7 hours and 14 minutes. And that's ignoring the fact that the stages get more difficult as they go on. So you know what? Screw the special stages. I'm not about to waste 7 plus hours of my life on, bar none, the worst special stages in any Sonic game I've ever played. If Sonic Heroes has taught me anything, it's that if I'm not having fun, it's time to stop. And for Sonic Advance, this is that time. I'm sure with enough time and persistence I could do it, but I frankly just don't want to. But let's say I did. Would I get anything worthwhile? A cool bonus level? An extra unlockable character? At bare minimum, I surely would at least unlock Super Sonic in the normal stages, right? Well, since it's that time of the video anyway, it's time for a SPOILER ALERT! Skip here if you don't want to see him! After conquering Egg Rocket, Sonic and friends enter Twitter Zone. This level is basically just three boss fights strung together with brief platforming. The first two are cute, being references to Sonic 1 and 2's first bosses, but screw the third one. This boss is one of the most egregious examples of poor telegraphing I've ever seen, giving you a ridiculously tight window to hit Eggman and even less time to react to whatever he pulls out of his egg sack. The most reliable way I've found to beat this boss is to just pray that he does this claw attack, then wail on him as many times as you can while juggling your rings. It does get the job done if you get the right RNG, but the fact that I had to resort to cheesing it says a lot about how poorly designed this fight is. After that, it's your typical classic Sonic ending, with Eggman being defeated and the character of your choice posing for the camera. But what about if you collect all seven Chao Emeralds? Well, with the power of YouTube, we can find out. Thanks, Cyberman65, you're doing the Lord's work. So after you defeat the third boss of Xylophone Zone, Sonic goes super and travels to the moon, where the true final boss takes place. Now this might just be because our friend Cyberman65 is a god gamer, but in his playthrough, this fight lasts all of 40 seconds, so take that as you will. After Eggman is soundly defeated, Sonic's friends look up at the moon, and a few days later, Super Sonic comes back down to Earth and goes like, mmm, and the game's over. That's it. That's all you get. No unlockable supersonic, no extras beyond that, nothing. Seven plus hours well spent.
Sonic Advance takes an opportunity to evolve 2D Sonic's iconic formula and instead uses it to create one of the most evil games I've ever experienced. Between the questionable level design moments and the harrowing special stages, Sonic Advance is downright hostile in its design. In other words, it's a classic Sonic game through and through. Yeah, despite me having a lot of problems with it, I don't regret my time with Sonic Advance. I would have liked a little more in the way of new mechanics, and some extra polish would have gone a long way, but when have I not said that about a Sonic game? 1, 2, CD, and even the beloved 3 and Knuckles all have their glaring issues that keep them from reaching their fullest potential, and Sonic Advance is just the next iteration of that. While Dimps still had a ways to go in terms of making a truly great Sonic experience, Sonic Advance is still absolutely worth playing. F*** the special stages though. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my other Sonic content and subscribe for more video game content just like this. You can also become a member for just a dollar per month to get your name in the credits, exclusive emojis, and a special channel in my Discord server. But either way, stay tuned, thanks for watching, and as always, enjoy life.